My name's Nick Braun. In this video, we're going to continue our discussion of mapping. Mapping is taking an abstract quantum circuit and putting it on actual hardware. It consists of two parts. The first one is routing. Routing allows us to reduce the number of swaps that we need for our circuit given the limited connectivity. And the other is layout, where we get to choose the actual qubits we map to. In routing before, we had a five qubit circuit. One, two, three, four, five, with a Hadamard on the first qubit, C naughts connecting each one of these to create a five qubit uh, GHZ state. And due to the mapping to a T geometry, we had to swap information around. So we did something using a saber swap method. We added a swap there and move this C naught back here. There we go. In this, uh, in this video, we're going to talk about layout. And the, the question arises here where I have this T geometry, but for most quantum backends, I'm going to have more qubits than I need. So I can add a bunch, say, in a heavy hex lattice. heavy hex looks like. I don't know. That was right. Something like this. So any kind of t-junction, I can look at this and I can find out that uh, I have many, many options. And so I might want to actually look at the properties of the qubits involved there. For example, I could do these three. I could do, say, these. Sorry, five, not three. Um, I could even choose these five as well. And then there's some more overlapping parts. So I have a choice of how I want to put this circuit that has been routed onto a layout, which is my actual device. OK. So because of that, I need to do some further transpilation. And the way we're going to do this today is I'll transpile it to a particular backend, say, say this one. And then I'm going to look at my, possible, my possibilities using some, something called the VF2 uh, subgraph isomorphism program. So the first thing we'll do is transpile our circuit. This guy. To our back end. And then what we'd like to do is see what kind of layouts we can, we can uh, get that are matching. And so for that we can use VF, for this one I'll use VF2 post layout. which takes in a transpiled circuit that we, just, that we just constructed. And there are some uh, features you can give to it. For example, for this layout method, we need to know the back end. Or given that, we could also special the coupling map. Uh, and per uh, perhaps we can uh, also specify the properties that we can get from the back end so that we can get our best choice. So by doing this, by default, this will pick the best five qubit subsystem on this, uh, on, on this actual backend. And it will score it against the properties. And in this uh, VF2 post layout, it typically uses the uh, re readout error as a default. And so once we put the, uh, uh, once, once we put that through the transpiler pass by just calling layout on the QC, our transpiled circuit, we will have something that is, is somewhat optimized for our backend. Alternatively, we can use a, uh, another uh, library that was built on top of Qiskit called Mapomatic, and we have a few methods from there we can use. Mapomatic is an extension of Qiskit that can be installed just with a pip install Mapomatic. And the three things we need to do, first of all, are we need to deflate the circuit. What happens here is when you transpile the circuit to the back end, it's going to extend the circuit to all the qubits on that back end. We need to remove the qubits that we're not using. All right, this also needs the back end. 
So we'll have our deflated circuit. We also need to um, apply the layouts. I'm sorry, before we apply the layouts, we need to find all the matching layouts. And that's on our deflated circuits for the back end. And that will give us all of our layouts. So the way this works is it, the VF2 algorithm embedded in uh, Mapomatic is going to take every five qubit topology that looks like this that it can find on this lattice, and it's going to return those. And then what Mapomatic does is it scores those according to the errors that the back end returns. It will multiply the fidelity of the single qubit gates, two qubit gates, and the readout error uh, measurement fidelity, and then return an infidelity metric, so it will invert that, uh, give you one minus the fidelity, meaning that the lowest score is the best, and that will be the first one reported. Evaluate layouts. That's what I'm looking for. And of course, that will be and it will take as an input the layouts we found. OK, uh, the, the uh, elements this returns is going to be a list of tuples, with each one of those giving you a possible layout, say, by the actual qubit connectivity, for example, followed by a score where lower is better. So that first one's going to be the best one, and then you'll get more and more. And I would typically take the best one, but I would also like to keep an eye on my score, because if that infidelity is too high, you might be running too complicated of a circuit. My name is Nick Braun, and this is how I would lay a, a circuit out on actual qubit topology. Thanks for watching.